Here now in this class we will see about the minikube and kubectl commands. So I hope you are aware of what is minikube and what is kubectl. We have already discussed on these two topics in our previous classes. So let's start this particular class. Here I have the command example and the description. So we, ha we have so many commands. So we will see some of the commands in this today's session. So uh, without wasting time, let's begin. Okay. So I have my Ubuntu machine running here. You can just open up the terminal with the shortcut that is Control Alt T. Let me just increase the size so that it will be visible to you. Okay, I hope that much is fine. Okay, so now the very first command which we see is the mini cube start. Okay, so what does this basically command does? So as you are aware of what is mini cube, mini cube is the one node cluster which is having the master and the worker both included in the one. Okay, so basically it will start the cluster. Okay, so when you will do the mini cube start, it will take some time and then it will start. If you are running it the first time, okay, then it's fine. Actually, I have also I am also running it for the first time. So it takes usually some of the time. Okay, so we will wait for it uh, for the completion. Okay, so till then let's see some of the commands. Okay, which uh, we have here. So here you can see with the first command that we have is the mini cube start. Here you can read the description like what it does. It starts the local Kubernetes cluster using the mini cube, like we had already installed it. And then using the stop, it uh, stops the mini cube. Then status, it will display the status of that particular cluster and then delete and all everything. Okay, so let's see. Here you can see we have a cluster created and mini cube has been uh, started. Okay, so. Okay, so here we can see about the further commands. Let's see if we do mini cube status now here. Uh, why it's not running uh, mini cube status okay so here you can see here you can see the type is control plane the host is running kubelet is running api server is running cube config configured okay so here you can just see some of the terms like api server kubelet okay all these terms like what you know about the what api server is now like we have already discussed it like if we, if we use api server to communicate with the cluster okay so here you can see using the minikube status command you can check the status of the cluster what's the current status if you will do minikube stop so it will just stop the cluster if i do it so let's see what it does here you can see powering of the minikube and also if you look at the table here like we have delete so it will delete the cluster okay we, then we have ip it will display the ip and SSH okay so let's do all those things so here you can see minikube is now st uh, stopped if you will check for the status now let's see what it shows so here you can see everything is stopped now so again to start the cluster what you can do you can just uh, enter the command like minikube start it will again restart the cluster okay like now it will not create the cluster it will just uh, restart the whatever the cluster which we had created just now with that command like uh, this i was running first time that's why it was creating the docker container and everything like cpus to memory this much is required all those things okay so uh, here you can see now it's just uh, restarting the restarting existing docker container for minikube okay so here you can see it's done now now if you will check the status so you will get it's running perfectly fine everything is running okay now moving forward let's check the uh mini cube ip command okay so it displays the ip of that particular cluster like we use this ip for using some of the services like which we look in this particular class and further okay so uh, next we have is the uh, let me check mini cube uh, SSH is there and delete is there so we will not use delete right now till then uh, let me show you SSH so SSH is basically used to it will connect to the virtual machine of that like mini cube like uh, whenever you install the mini cube in your PC or in your Ubuntu machine so at that time what happens one VM is also created in that mini cube so with mini cube SSH you can connect to that particular VM so here you can write any uh, Linux command which we use like here you can see who am I so here you can see it says docker if you do like if you want to create some file like uh, 
cat test of TST. This is a test file. So it will, if you do ls, so here you can see the file has been created. Okay, you can read file as well. So in this way, you can use the uh, Docker. Okay, Docker is uh, like Minikube SSH. So to exit, you can just uh, uh, write the exit command and you will just log off. Okay, so you, you can uh, use this Minikube SSH also to connect to the uh, Docker VM. Okay, or actually it is used for the debugging and testing purpose as well. Okay, so moving forward, we have, uh, uh, now we have covered all this Minikube commands. Let me move forward in the kubectl. Okay, so what is kubectl? Like we know that kubectl is the command line tool that we use to communicate with the cluster okay so you can use the command like kubectl version okay uh, sorry uh, what it says uh, command kubectl from snap kubectl see snap info forward is the version okay uh, let me just check again just kubectl okay fine it's there it's running I think there was some mistake in the command. Okay, version. Okay, leave it. Uh, you can use kubectl to get the cluster info using this command. So here you can see you can get the cluster info, whatever the cluster is running, you can get the info. The, and also the important part here is that like uh, for the running of the kubectl your mini cube should also run it's not like you you uh, your mini cube is not running and then you are trying to run this kubectl command so in that case it will not work okay we will check that uh, if i stop the mini cube okay it's stopping and uh, okay let's wait Okay, now when you will try kubectl cluster info, so in that case you can see you, you are getting so much of error like the connection to the server was refused and all those things. So that's why we should have minikube in the background. Okay, so minikube is started again. Okay, so minikube has been started here, you can see. And now we can use kubectl again. So now let's see the table and we will do the, uh, we will run those particular commands. So here you can see kubectl get pods. What it does, it retrieves information about Kubernetes resources like pods, deployments, and services. Okay, so here you can see many things we have. Okay, also we have this create command. Okay, so it just creates the new deployment for Nginx web server. So what we will do, we will do this one so how we can do it so for that we have to just this clear the screen and let's run the command like kubectl create and then we have the what we want to create what service we want to create deployment and then we can just uh, write the name like we can write the deployment name as the nginx and the image which we want to use like we want to image as nginx so here if you are aware of the docker then that time well, like that will be very helpful because the here image refers to that the docker hub images okay so whatever the images you create and uh, whatever the you images you want to upload to the docker hub and if you want to use those images then you can use it from this like using this command okay so let's hit enter and here you can see we have this uh, nginx created if you will see for the kubectl get deployment so here you can see we have nginx it's not ready yet okay so it's not ready yet and also we can check for the kubectl get pods so here you can see one container has been created okay container creating like it's creating so what happens whenever you are deploying any kind of resource like any kind of uh, whatever resources okay so at that time what is basically is happening in the background like we have learned about the kubernetes uh, kubernetes architecture like we have the uh, pods and inside pods we have container running and some so many things like replicas is created and that replicas is maintained by that 
product managers okay so basically what happening is here the same thing is here like when you are doing the deployment then ports is creating and the replica is also creating so here when you use it by default without providing the replica uh, uh, okay so replica in the command so what happens for that time there basically only one replica is created okay but when if you will provide hyphen hyphen replicas equal to whatever the number then at that time what will happen that particular number of replicas will be created so this is the basic overview of uh, the, this command okay so let me again check so here you can see the pod is running and you can check for deployment also it's also ready so now what we can do uh, we can just expose this deployment as a service so what does it mean so basically we, uh, we want to use this uh, now nginx servers we want to use this nginx server how you do it so for that also we have this kubectl expose it's like we have this in the table uh, you can check here you can see kubectl expose deployment nginx type equal to node port so here you can see what it does creates a new node port service for a deployment named nginx so basically the node port service it simply means like that exposes the ports of the deployment to the specified ports okay so we will define some of the port number like here 80 is provided but basically what happens like whenever you try to get the url at that time the cluster basically uh, defines their port between the 13000 to some 32k thousand ports number okay so this is the basic thing so let's just run this command and then we will be able to use the uh, nginx servers from our web browser so how we can do it expose deployment and then we need to provide the name of the deployment the name of the deployment we have nginx okay and then the type equal to node port if you don't provide the port number then also it's fine it's not mandatory to define so you can just hit enter oh sorry uh, it's mandatory uh, i thought it's not mandatory sorry for that okay we define some port equal to 80 okay now service is exposed and now you can check for the cube ctl get services okay oh sorry okay so here you can see now this nginx service has been created okay and here port you can see this one okay 80 35 4 3 all these things and now for getting the url what you can do mini queue service and the whatever the name is there nginx is there and hyphen hyphen url it will give you the url and then you can access these things so here you can see the port number which we are getting is 3543 okay so it basically what is happening just redirecting okay so let's see uh, where we go okay here you have to just enter the url and here you can see the welcome to nginx is the web page the default web page we are getting okay so now just uh, we will revert back to the things like we will just uh, uh, remove the services and then we will try to access the web pages let then see with whether we are able to access it or not that nginx web page so to delete the command is cube to delete and the resource and that is services and then the the name is nginx so here you can see nginx is deleted again we will come up on here let me reload it so still we are able to access okay so uh, let me just again check okay it is deleted now we will just delete the deployment so how we can do it deployment okay so deployment is also deleted now let's check okay here you can see now we are not able to connect to that particular ip so uh, in this way you can use the multiple cube ctl commands okay we have so many like here you can see cube ctl logs and cube ctl delete we did delete right now let's check for the logs uh, what it shows okay uh, log is there i mean did you mean logs okay 
So here you can see I expected what we what it's saying. If we do hyphen H, okay, we are doing something wrong, I guess. Okay, QCTL hyphen hyphen all. All containers logs in the pods. Okay. If we do control C and we do this one. So here you can see. Uh, okay. Okay, let's see some of them like uh, what we have here. Hyphen C. Okay, so uh, let's check the pods what we have. Okay, okay, we have uh, uh, deleted the all the deployment. That's why we are not able to get the pods details. Okay, okay, got it. Okay, that's why we were not able to just get this uh, output of that and we were getting the error. Okay, so uh, that's all for today's uh, class and I hope you liked it. If you have any query, you can ask us in the comment section. Thank you for watching and I'll meet you in the next class. Thank you.